today I'm making treats. Treats for the dogs and treats for the chickens. Treats for Halloween or fall or whatever. For the dogs, I'm gonna cut two pumpkins open. I will take out a lot of the seeds and stuff because I don't think they like them. They might. But I'm going to fill each pumpkin with treats so that they'll have something to go after while they're eating the pumpkin. For the chickens. This one I'm just going to get started for them. And let them carve it for me. I saw this lady do this on YouTube. do and I'm going to give it to the chickens and let them open it up and find the treats inside. Dogs, I need to get a big spoon to scoop out the insides. these pumpkins I'm going to keep and make pumpkin seeds for us. Roasted pumpkin seeds. And I might keep a few for growing pumpkins next spring. I'm not cleaning it perfect. It's still kind of messy inside. But most of the stuff is out. of it. I have their treats stored and fill it up with the rest. It's a beautiful fall day. It's Saturday, two days before Halloween. I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> Just walked back and forth a couple times carrying crap. But everybody's kind of excited for their treat. There goes our neighbor and the horse and buggy. The chickens have no idea the treat they're about to get. So I've got a bunch of little treats. 
fill their little Halloween pumpkins with. Kind of give them the incentive to tear them apart. Bought some more toys for them because they've destroyed all of their toys. Including this really cool ball that has a little tennis ball inside that moves around. It's going to hopefully keep them very busy. But the chickens are just going to get this little pumpkin. So I'm going to start with the puppies. Give them their treat first. And then I'll do the chickens. I don't know if you can see, I'll take you inside. This is our puppy enclosure. That's their den. And this is their play area. What do you have, Betty? Do you like your treat? Do you like your treat, Judy? Huh? Do you like your treat? No, this is Mama's. Yeah. I think they do like their treats. They're trying to figure out if one is better than the other. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> what, Betty? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, no jumping, no jumping. You giving up on your treat, Betty? What's in there? What's in there? <laughs> now the puppies have this whole huge area that is all theirs, including a spot over there on the other side of where the chicken fence ends. Chickens have a small yard and then a covered run. Oh, go play with your toy, Betty. Go play with your toy. I got you this toy. Yeah, go play with your toy. Yeah. Oh, never to be left out of some love. <laughs> well, that's a good sign if they're running back to their treats. So. Now, to give the chickens their treat. Uh, the baby chickens, probably still in the coop because they just, that's just what they do. They don't want to be out yet. So we'll see how the chickens react to their treat.
And the idea is for them to finish carving it by pecking away at it. And they will make it whatever they want it to be. Hi, Tika. <laughs> oh, Fiji, you're in the way. They're all very interested. So, this is our chicken coop to this point. We've been in our house for a little over six months, just barely over six months, six months and a couple weeks. And this is the coop I had built. It's the new fluffy butt hut. And I did my best to make it a nice, comfortable place for the chickens. And then it's got a carpet on the floor to help insulate for me. Lots of storage shelves. More storage area over here. We've got one, two, three windows on this side and two windows together there. So that gives me plenty of light and ventilation. Have a swinging wooden door with a screen on it so I can easily get in and out. Got gate on either side with chicken wire and netting to keep the chickens in. And then the door just needs a little adjustment so that it swings over that carpet because right now it's getting stuck. Hi Tika. Tika always greets me. And these are the babies. Silly things just want to hang in here and don't want to come out. I can't get the door to stay shut because I don't have my latch on it. I must have dropped it. It's plenty spacious. No, no, you're not going out there. I have this makeshift ramp for them. I'm going to make them a real ramp. But yeah, as you can see, they use it. It works. Got nesting boxes. I got a few different kinds. Now these two. I have two um, milk crates, and then I got that big tin can. I threw this up here night before last because. They've been fighting over roosting spaces. They've got those two there and then two up there, but we intend to put another one up high, another one about that level, and then maybe one this level. We'll see. These are the little girls. That's their automatic pop door. Oh, somebody must have been chasing you guys. Hmm. I don't know who. We'll go figure that out. We will go see. And I've also got this stuff here. Small wire mesh on frames that keeps the pine shavings from being kicked out into the work area. The entire coop has OSB on the inside. We've got plenty of ventilation including that cupola up there. Plenty of places to hang anything I might want to hang, attach whatever I need to attach. And easy to get to the nesting boxes. I'm going to take that frame door off of there. I just have to unscrew it so I can get at those nesting boxes easily. On the outside of the coop is metal walls. And we have OSB with metal roofing on top of it. So the coop itself is very secure. 
And as makeshift as this is, they seem to like to use it. Oh, interesting. All right, babies. Got to get these babies to go out and stay out because they used to have their food and water in here, but I don't have it in here anymore. So I've got to get them going out and playing. And that's my white coach and rooster. And these are the golden girls. That's Blanche. And that's Estelle. This is one of the two Brahmas. I haven't named them yet. I've been thinking about names. And I've got this blue Andalusian. This is Emily. And then over here, this one is blue. This white chick is a leghorn. Her name is Nia. And the little black ones are Morticia and Wednesday. Uh, Tika, I'm not picking you up right now. I'm sorry. And here comes my silver lace wine dot. I have two of them. What? That's the inside of the coop. Walk to the outside. As you can see, metal. The door is metal. Nothing is going to chew into my coop. Not that anything would try with these big girls out here guarding, but you can never be too careful. I also have welded wire over where the screens are, so I can have these windows open in the summertime if I want. This is one of the roosters. His name is Foggy, Foghorn Leghorn. He is a Welsomer rooster. This is one of my partridge cochins. That's Miss Patty. This BG. She's a Polish, and she's a little bit wackadoo. This is Miss Frizzle. She is a Easter egg or Frizzle, but she's really more Easter egg than anything else. But the hatchery says that anything that she hatches is likely to be frizzled. So we'll see. And that is one of my Blue Lace Red Wyandots. I've got two of them. Over here is Babette. We have Babette and Miss Patty. And that again is Tika. She's a Buff Orpington, and that is her sister, Saffron. This black one here is Elvira. She is a Jersey Giant. That's one of my Cuckoo Marins. She is a chocolate egg layer. That one is Suki. And the other one that's around here somewhere is Lorelei. She's probably over by the tree. Yes, I know Elvira. That is, those two there are roosters. The one on the right, that one is Rocky, and the one next to him is Apollo. Now, Apollo was a surprise rooster. So was Foggy. The only roosters that I planned to have were Rocky, and then the white cochin rooster that's in the coop, his name is Bjorn. That is my other silver lace winda, and that is and the other Welsomer hen. This is a white cochin. Its name is Yuan. And Yuan's sister is over here. Her name is Jana. This one here is a cream leg bar. And that's her sister. They're both cream leg bars. They, they lay blue eggs. Their names are Hyacinth and Violet. And then that silvery one there um, is an Easter egger. I've never seen one that color. If you've seen one that color before, let me know. But I've never seen one this color. And then, let's see. That's the other blue lace red wind up. And go into the covered run, which we are finishing a solid roof for it. We're going to use those clear ridged panels so that the snow runs off and the sun can shine in. These are some of the babies. That's Bjorn, the other rooster. That's their automatic pop door. I store their feed in a galvanized can so that it stays dry 
and nothing can get into it. Got to give them their crumble because they're out. And we've just kind of makeshift put these up here to keep the tarp from sagging when it gets full of rainwater until we can get that solid roof on. Betty, why aren't you playing with your new toy? Hmm? Judy is. Yeah, I know. The girls have been pretty good. I mean, they you can see where they're trying to kind of poke their nose in with the chickens. The chickens really seem to like them, but they're still too young to just let them have at it with the chickens. I think chickens would be fine, but I don't know how fine they would be. So far, they don't seem to react too much to when the chickens go crazy out here, which they do. And I've seen plenty of the chickens come up and go nose to nose with the dogs and the dogs just smell them and don't seem to be too interested in them. Betty more than Judy, really. And she's watching the chickens with their pumpkin. I think that if they were able to be in here, they'd probably steal the pumpkin from the chickens. But that reminded her she has a pumpkin. This should keep their, their minds busy, keep them mentally healthy from being bored, give them different things that they have to actually get into and figure out and chew on. They can chew on it all they want and it's healthy for them. Now Betty will probably come back to it later. But Judy is very interested. She cut her whole head in there. Well, her whole nose. <laughs> now, in case anybody is wondering, this fence is not very sturdy keeps the chickens in. It does not keep the dogs out because the dogs respect the fence. The only time they really mess with the fence is if I'm in here and they want to come in here with me. But for the most part, oh, <laughs> I have a chicken on me. Hello, Tika. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Crazy chicken. I don't think I want a chicken on me. <laughs> You crazy chicken. <laughs> but as I was saying, the dogs respect the fence. Here, Tika, pick you up and make you happy. There. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Yeah, okay. If they wanted to push down this fence, they easily could, but they don't. Now the fence that surrounds there particular enclosure we have some electric wire on that's really to keep them from getting away because Pyrenees do like to wander and they have gotten away a couple times when we didn't have this fence up we just let them come out of their enclosure and play and then they would just take off and they will not come back unless they feel like it but the electric fence has worked really well They've each gotten a little bit of a shock, a surprise. And that has made them very wary of getting too close to the fence. See, that chicken really likes the, the dogs. Her and a couple of the white ones tend to be up against there with the dogs a lot. The dogs are interested because our neighbors next door are outside and they're talking. They can hear them. They are definitely on guard. And if there's a noise they don't recognize, they will bark. But I didn't want to electrify the fence around the chickens because I really don't want fried chicken. 
so I've got bird netting up and around the top just to keep any flyers in. What, you're not happy? Still? I just had you. Do I have to pick you up some more? That's the enclosure so far. And that's the chickens. Let's see what their progress has been. Looks like they pecked a little bit on the top. Oh my, yes. We've got some nice progress there, girls. We've got a winking jack-o'-lantern. Oh, they hear something going on over there. Oh, it's our neighbor coming to visit, I think. She's coming through the trees. Yep, there she comes. So, picking up where I left off, because my neighbor is Amish, I turned the camera off to respect that she may not want to have her and her child on camera. But you know, they wanted to come over and see the chickens and see how the dogs are doing. Offered us free horse manure. So, we're gonna go over and get that. That'll be great for the garden because I don't have a horse, but that's the best manure that you can get. So we'll have chicken and horse. That'll be great. But back to where the chickens are with the pumpkin. They're still working away at it. And they really like it. And then the silvery Easter acre I was talking about, her name is Tinsel, because she's kind of tinsel color. I've thrown some whole corn on the ground. It's the first time they've had that. It's really good for them, helps them to stay warm at night. I'll give them that in the evenings when it's gonna get colder, because it takes longer for them to digest the whole corn. So it'll help keep them nice and warm all night. It's supposed to get kind of cold tonight. I have chased the littles out of the coop and blocked the door so they have to be out here. And I put in the crumble that they're used to eating. They seem to be pretty pleased with that except that the rooster came in and chased them all out. But they need to get used to him anyway. Are you scared? Did he scare you? You're okay. Mm. You're a meanie, aren't you? You girls are going to have to start sticking up for yourselves pretty soon. Hey, Foggy. And Judy. Judy is just chewing away on her pumpkin. Betty has cast hers aside so she's not as impressed with it I don't think but Judy really likes hers and in case anybody's worried about the fact that I forgot to take the sticker off of that particular pumpkin it's okay because they make those stickers out of edible material just in case a child should accidentally get a hold of an apple with a sticker on it and eat the, uh, the sticker it won't hurt them but I'll probably go back in there and pull off that sticker anyway. And Tim is in the coop, working on the coop door. Whoa. Tim's working on the coop door, the inner door so it'll swing more easily now that I've put the rug in there. He wasn't anticipating that I was gonna put a rug in, but I did. And that chair is my chair. That's where I sit when I visit the chickens, but they also like to be up on it. Rocky seems to be particularly fond of it.
and the door is all done. Let's see how well it moves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Glides beautifully and locks securely. I need to clean the droppings board and then let the littles back in. They flipped it on its back now. They still are not opening up that other eye. I'm try poking some corn in there and see if they'll peck at the corn. Yep. <laughs> yes, Elvira. I've already held you twice. Judy's pumpkin is all the way over here. I don't know which one of them dragged it over here. I saw Betty chewing on it for a while. But it's got most of its innards out. <laughs> Betty's pumpkin is flipped over upside down and there it sits. And the girls are romping and playing. So that is the poop slash dog enclosure. I guess you could call it our outbuildings to this point. Still have some work to do. Um, like I said, on the roof for the run, we also need to put a solid roof on the dog enclosure before we get much snow. Because at this point, they just have a canvas roof that came with it. And it does pretty good, but I'm not confident that it's going to be able to hold a heavy snow load like we get here. So we're going to do solid top and solid sides and run some kind of guttering system around both structures to get the water to go away from their structures so it doesn't accumulate on the floor. They're being a couple of crazy girls right now. But as far as the interior of the poop, that's almost done. Told you about the roosting bars we want to do. I do want to give the chickens a bigger area, but I'm not going to do that until they're older. 